My name is Glenn Alexander. I've come from Nottingham University Hospitals. Uh, I work in the trauma orthopaedic theatres there. Um, and our project was about improving the care of the vulnerable adult patient or the confused adult patient coming to theatre. So just a bit of background. So Nottingham University Hospitals uh, is a really big trust. Um, it's one of the biggest uh, and busiest uh, in England. Um, and across all of our sites, we have 56 operating theatres and we're also the major trauma centre for the whole of the East Midlands. So again, a, a little bit more background. So within the trauma orthopaedic theatres, we operate on around 800 necrofema patients. So that's uh, some form of hip surgery, um, as well as 400 patients that are classed as elderly. And that's just in four out of our 56 theatres. So the group of patients that we wanted to improve the care, we felt was quite large or definitely significant enough. Um, and of those 800 patients, 34% signed a consent form four, and that's a patient who is lacking consent to consent themselves. And that is the group of patients where we started our trial. Um, so to be, to be part of our project, uh, one of the areas that they had to be was a consent form four patient. Um, so this is the this was the current practice before we looked into it. So every adult patient that entered the theatre department entered alone, um, and obviously you're entering a very busy department. There's lots of people around, um, and it, it's unfamiliar for all of our patients uh, and very busy and can be quite scary. Um, so this can lead to an increase in, in anxiety and behavioural behavioural issues, especially for our consent form four patients who are potentially confused already before they even come to us. So what did we want to do? So we wanted to offer a, a more personalized care for this patient group. So beforehand, whether you was a 90 year old confused patient or whether you're somebody like me who's 36, you got treated exactly the same. And we didn't quite think that was right. Um, so we wanted to follow the paediatric model, which where every paediatric model, every paediatric patient coming to theatre comes with mum and dad, and then mom, one of mum or dad is available to come into the operating uh, theatre department and into the anaesthetic room. Um, and this was campaigned for in the 1960s, however it was never extended or it's never been extended to vulnerable adult patients. And we feel they need just as much specialist care as what the paediatric patients uh, also need. Um, so we thought we'd better change it. So we thankfully got agreement that we could trial this. So we trialed it um, with three orthopedic wards, uh, four theatres and also theatre recovery. And this was quite challenging because it sounds really simple. Let's just get, let's just get a carer down. Let's get uh, a son or daughter down to theatre. But actually it's a really fluid process and it covers lots of different areas. So we needed buy-in from all the areas involved. So at that point, uh, we managed to get uh, the sister from C4, uh, which is Emily Mulvaney, who's here on the front row this morning, and also Kerry Ann Story, deputy team leader from Recovery, on board as well. And this was absolutely essential for planning it. I can't um, make a change that's going to affect another area without obviously getting them involved and getting their feedback. And throughout, was really conscious of, I don't want to make something better for my area, but put the burden or make it worse for another area. So that's why it's really important from the get-go that the journey of ward to theatre, to theatre recovery and back to the ward was all discussed and all planned right from the start. So this is what we hope to achieve and this is what we think we have, in, have achieved by doing it. So a reduced patient anxiety by offering better emotional support. So that's with the son or daughter or the relative, whoever it may be coming down with them into this scary environment being that familiar face with them. Um, a byproduct of that, by reducing the anxiety, is an increase in patient cooperation, um, which means that the, then the theatre team and the people involved in the care, um, they can directly do the bits that they need to be doing. Um, and as well as we've got the relative uh, calming the patient down. Um, we hope that that was gonna lead to an increase in relative confidence. So sometimes relatives don't see the uh, operative surgeon before they even come to theatre. Whereas by getting them down, we're welcome, welcoming them into our department. We're saying we're being open and honest about what the care that we deliver. 
and you're more than welcome to come and see what we do. Um, they also come into the anaesthetic room, so they see some of our um, pre-operative checks. It's called the WHO sign-in. Um, so again, hopefully that gives a bit of confidence in terms of everybody knows their role, everybody knows what, what they're doing. Um, and we hope that as well as improving the patient experience, we're also going to give confidence uh, to the relative. And what we hoped as well was a reducing uh, post-op delirium. So a key part, the original plan was to get the relative down into the operating suite beforehand, but actually the project evolved and actually we shouldn't just be looking at pre-op, we need to be looking at post-op as well. So along with theatre recovery, um, we looked at getting the relatives down post-operatively a lot sooner as well. So as they're waking up and as they're confused already, as they're potentially in pain for their operation, again, they've got that friendly face uh, right next to them, giving them reassurance when needed. So at the start of the project, um, just to see if it was a good idea, because this literally just started off as one idea. We, um, we surveyed every consultant anaesthetist within uh, trauma orthopedic theatres just to get their opinion. Do you think this is going to offer a benefit? And actually, do you think it's going to make anything worse? So again, we didn't want to make one thing better, but then uh, reduce uh, the care that we were given in another area. And generally, the consensus was very good. And some of the feedback from the consultants was, this makes a lot of sense. Why haven't we been doing this already? And, and again, it just gave confidence to actually run the right lines in what we're trying to look at here. Um, so as I say, we included the wards, the theatres and theatre recovery. And theatre recovery completed their own survey, um, looking at post-op, whether uh, a relative being there would, would offer benefit. And we also, at that point, had to get other people involved. So we, we got advice from a lady who piloted open ward visiting a number of years ago within our trust, because we wanted to, our goal was similar in effect of what we was trying to do. Um, we had uh, an associate professor, an anaesthetist, uh, join the project, and he helped with independently evaluating it to making sure that we got the, the, the feedback at the end. And we also spoke to our head of uh, patient and public involvement, because we realized that we not only had a duty of care to the patient, we wanted to improve their experience, but actually at that point when the relative's with us, we've got a duty of care to look after that relative. Often, not often, but you know, potentially there's, there's a point where they could become upset in terms of that their relative's um, um, potentially in pain and they're about to have an operation and they're obviously worried. So at that point, as a theatre team, we generally didn't ever see any relatives. At that point, we had a duty of care to that relative and again, um, without the help of all these extra people, we would never have got to trial and we would never have, have got the success that we had. Um, this was a really, this was one of my, this made me the most happy, I think, because as I say, we started off with one idea and then things grew. So we then looked into post-op, um, getting the carers down. And then we actually dedicated two theatre recovery bays to consent form four patients. So they had, the, they had their own bays. So these bays were larger, which meant that we could get the relatives down uh, post-op a lot sooner, which again would just make that journey a lot more fluid. And we also made sure with myself, um, the sister from the ward and deputy team leader from recovery, it was about us getting together and just talking because even though that journey was there, we'd never really spoke to each other. And actually, you know, then you say, oh, actually, if you did this for us, that would really make it a lot easier for us. And just through talking, we, we managed to find that not always was the About Me document leaving the ward. It didn't really help in theatre to a certain extent, but it actually helped theatre recovery because then they could look at what the patient was like pre-op compared to post-op and then analyse the patient from there. Um, obviously, we had a, a really big uh, job in terms of communicating it. So we were big on Twitter. We had notice boards to communicate a start date. And also we, we attended each other's timeout days to speak to the whole of the ward team. So biggest challenge was it was different and people don't like change. And, and generally a lot of people were on board with it. However, people say, well, it's been okay so far. And beforehand we were offering a really good service. We we're offering a good level of care, but actually what drove it was, can we be better? And we thought that we could. Communicating it, even though we, we tried really hard, it was, it was really, really difficult. You know, I have 40 members in my theater team. There's probably about 60 in recovery. 40 on the wards, maybe more. 110, sorry, 110 on the wards. 
across three awards. So just communicating it into our little teams is really difficult. Um, and it was, it was a really big challenge. But actually what we did, we actually went into a &E and we communicated it with it to them. So at first port of call, the relatives, when they first come into a &E, knew that they're, they're allowed to stay. You haven't got to go now just because they're in hospital. You can, you can stay for the rest. We'll be quick. Uh, yeah, super quick. Super quick. Um, and just to say, it doesn't always work. So, and, but that's okay because nothing's perfect. But if it helps 80% of our patients, then we'll take that. We'll take that and, um, and we'll be happy with that. Okay. Is that okay? That's okay. Thanks so much. Sorry. Well done. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere.